Hey, hey, this is director, producer Alan Wills, and I am on Positive Power 21 with Jerry Royce Live. And when I'm online, I listen to Jerry Royce Live at www.freaker.com backslash positivepower21.org. Y'all heard? This is Minister Cornell Sean Gregg of the New Antioch Baptist Church of Baltimore, Maryland, Randallstown. You are listening to Jerry Voice Live. You are listening to PositivePower21.org with Jerry Voice. What up? It's your boy, Kano Kingston. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. Hey, this is Pat. Hi, I'm Teresa Powell. Hi, Jerry. This is Iowa Sandro Carter. Hi, this is Phil Powers. Hello, this is Teresa Bobby with Jerry Royce Live. Hi, I'm Phil LeBurn. I'm live on the Jerry Royce Show. Hi, what do you do? This is Boy Who is the Same. Hey, this is Dolly, the poet, spoken word artist. Hello, this is Ramon Marquis with Jerry Worth Live. All right, all right, everyone. we got Robin Lynn, and I'm keeping it live right now on Jerry Royce Live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up? This is a award winning podcast with the greatest podcast on earth. Thank you for stopping by. I'm your host, Jerry Voice Live Worldwide on Internet Radio, where you get your positive on. So when it's all positive, it's all power. That's positive power. This is a worldwide podcast for growth, wealth, and success. Thank you. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the green hills of western New Jersey, inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars and human lives worth less. Nicholas Harding, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse, a suspense thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Data Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com, or DonnaInc.org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Yeah, yeah, you tell them, robot. It's me, y'all, Jerry Royce Live Worldwide. I want to thank everybody for joining us and welcome to Positive Power 21.org. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power of 21? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I am Jerry Woods Live. I am blessed. I am worldwide. Philippians 4, 6 reads, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs, and don't forget to thank him for his answer. You're listening to episode 391, and we have tonight, we have Minister Cornell Sean Gray from New Antioch Church in Baltimore, Maryland, Randallstown, for some of us that live locally. And his bio reads, 
Minister Cornell Gregg was born on September 18, 1973, in Baltimore, Maryland, to Cornell P. Gregg and the late Karen M. Hawkins. Minister Gregg was educated in the Baltimore City Public School System. In June 91, he received his high school diploma from Northwestern Senior High School. It was in August of the same year that he enlisted in the United States Marine Corps, where he served for three years. After leaving the Marine Corps in 1994, he gained employment at the United States Postal Service, where he's currently employed. He, in July of 96, that a fellow employee, Deacon Audi Roundtree, invited Minister Gregg to a men's fellowship cookout given by New Antioch Baptist Church in Ramstown, where today Minister Gregg is an active member. It was at the cookout where he met the founder and current pastor of the church, Pastor Kenneth L. Barney Sr., who also witnessed that led Minister Gregg back to the Lord Jesus Christ. Over the next 19 years, he also enlisted, I'm sorry, Okay, he served in several ministries while serving in the active U.S. Army. That minister, Greg, received confirmation from the Lord that he was to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. It was during this time that minister, Greg, understand that he must seek more biblical and scriptural education. In 2010, Greg received an Associate of Theology degree from Covenant Bible Seminary located in Tacoma, Washington. He's an active participant in several ministries, which include Street Evangelistic Team at New Antioch Nursing home ministry and men's ministry, prison ministry, and the No Cross, No Crown Street ministry team at New Antioch. Minister Greg believes that God has commissioned him to remove scriptural ignorance in the church as well as bringing back the understanding and function of all spiritual gifts. Minister Greg's favorite Bible verse is John 3.17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Craig is proud father of three children and a grandfather of one grandchild. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Minister Greg. What's going on, sir? How you doing? Welcome to Positive Power Twenty One dot org. What's going on? Praise the Lord, my brother. Yes, uh, every, uh, it's all good. I'm blessed in the Lord, and I, 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 hey, I'm, I'm glad to be on this podcast. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, Greg, I told you in the beginning of the show, man, I got one script question, man, and that is, who is Minister Cornell Sean Gregg? Who is well, Minister Cornell Sean Gregg is a, a humble servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I do not count it robbery to preach his gospel. I, I count it an honor. Um, I, um, I, I just I love the Lord. I love the Lord, uh, genuinely. I don't say that this is for a show form or fashion because we're on the radio, but I genuinely love the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, has my lifestyle been perfect? Has my walk with Christ been perfect over these past 19 years? No, I won't. Uh, I won't even. <laughs> I, I won't even uh, lie to the to the Holy Spirit on this broadcast. But uh, no, but the Lord is still faithful. Amen. He still says he's still married to the backslider. Uh, in this case, I wouldn't really call it backslider. I just call it carnality, a carnal lifestyle. And so, therefore, God, uh, you know, over these past 19 years, even even when I sometimes I would walk contrary to the word of God, God would always remind me that I'm still his and that he still has a purpose mm -hmm. for my life. Amen. And that's who I am. I'm just a uh, lover of the Lord. I love people. I love to see, and my passion now is to see people get saved and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And so mm -hmm. that's, that's basically me. That's basically me, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. So we we gonna dig a little deeper, man. So the you know my audience, man, they stretch so far, man, in the Merlin area, all the way okay. down to the good eastern shore. You know, we we over yes. here on the western shore. You know, we're known to the western shore to the eastern shore. Of course, we call yes. them, you know, the people who live near Ocean City and got the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, even though connected yes. to the two of them. Yes. But what they like to know is, you know, what what was what was uh, Minister Greg like before, you know. You know, before his walk with Christ and and oh, studying in seminary, so what was he like? What was he really? Uh, like? Well, well, actually, before before I received Christ, I was a um, how can I say this? I try to be a player. Um, I guess before <laughs> we all, you know, yes, we all have, we all have a testimony. You know, BC before Christ, and so you know, mm -hmm. I um, I try, you know, I I, I try to be a lover, a player. Um, I don't know, you know, at that time, you know, before, I, like, I got saved when, um, uh, just to give you a quick, i give you some more of my background, I was raised in the church. You know, my grandmother was an evangelist. 
uh, Sister Rosetta Gray. Uh, she, and we, I grew up, as a matter of fact, I grew up in a um, home church, this New Hope Baptist Church in Baltimore, Maryland, or Harlem and Fremont. And so, therefore, you know, I, um, you know, I was born and raised in the church, and therefore, you know, like I say, uh, I, I had that foundation. But, of course, you know, when you graduate from high school um, and you graduate, you want to explore the world or uh, see, see, you know, I, and uh, see, see what's, uh, you know, see, you have to see the world for yourself, you know what I'm saying? You understand? Mm-hmm. So I, I was in church, but I, yeah, I wasn't in Christ. And that's, you know, that's a big difference, and that's a part of my ministry now. Uh, you know, it's a lot of people in church, but they're not in Christ, and that's very dangerous. And so, therefore, you know, with all that biblical foundation, I still was lost. And so, therefore, you know, like I said before, Christ, I, um, I, I still, I, I, I tried to get out there and uh, dip and dab and sing. And, you know, uh, I, uh, wow, brother, you know, uh, it's been a couple of times where, you know, um, Satan, Satan was setting me up for, I wouldn't say he was just, he was just, he was, he was baiting me in, so to speak. And so, therefore, you know, um, but I had a praying grandmother and a praying father. My father got saved in 1985. He belongs to the Mount Lebanon Baptist Church in Baltimore. So I had those mm-hmm. strong prayer wars praying for me. And they saw me going down the wrong road. But, you know, and I said, uh, wherever there's a heavy anointing, there's also a heavy demonic attack. And so Satan was attacking me. Demon- he was trying, you know, he led me away from the Lord. You know, uh, uh, he, and uh, it was prophesied when I was a kid, like when I was 10, 11 years old, that, you know, there was a calling on my life to preach this gospel, preach, no, excuse me, preach the gospel, the gospel, not this gospel, the gospel, because there's only one, that's of Jesus Christ. And so, therefore, mm-hmm. you know, um, but before I just was in rebellion, and, and, not, and not to be explicit on your show, but what caused the rebellion is my first, uh, I would say my first uh, sexual experience when I was 17. And, uh, you know, I lost my virginity at 17 and, and to a young lady from school, from high school, you know, that I met uh, mm-hmm. You know, so, and I think that's what causes rebellion because uh, sexual immorality, you know, in any sense, it, it invites demons into your life. And, it, and that's what causes rebellion against the Lord. And so um, mm-hmm. that's what happened with me, bro. So I just rebelled against the Lord for about four or five years. Uh, I got, I like, I like, yeah, about four or five years I just was in rebellion, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I, you know, uh, I started, I didn't become an alcoholic even though both my parents were. So I thank God for that. But I did, you know, I drank, you know, I tried to party. Strip clubs was my thing, you know, um, mm-hmm. just all all around about whoremongering. I got to say that. I'm a, I was a whoremonger, brother. I was a yeah, whoremonger. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, so, Womanizing, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Womanizing. Hey, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, yeah. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Yeah. Now, you're out there doing your thing, you know, like your young yeah. men do, exploring the world. And I always tell people, right. you know, I think it's, I think it's better sometimes to explore early than to try to explore late. You know, I yes. get those guys, they got the family, they got the two-car right. garage, the, you know, the rides they want, the right. nice wife, both both good yes. jobs in the, in the community that you wanted. And then suddenly you're starting to look at the short skirts. Right, right. Yes, yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. It comes about time. Right, you know, right, time right. Time right, right now, you know, but right. it's because you don't know. I'm curious. So right, you got right. it all out. You know what those places look like. So if you ever had an opportunity to minister right. to the young men, you know where they are because you've been there before. Right. So you yes, I've been there. there. Right, right, right. I've been there. So, you know, you know, and it's the case of you know, sometimes it's like, you know, curiosity kills the cat. So, you know, right. so and, and that's what happened. Then, yeah, you got a chance to see it, experience it. And now you're right. in a position where when you go into the prison ministries, you know, you know what happened. Some of the guys just went a little too deep. And too long, right. and, right. and some people play around so much that they right. they don't they don't get the school work, and that's probably what happened to a lot of those young men. You probably ministered right. to they just had right. the street they court, street yes. court up in the street, yes. uh, right? And now and this, oh, I'm, now I'm familiar now I'm familiar with Northwestern High School because actually my yes. first girlfriend, first real girlfriend, actually attended that school, and and okay. it was a Northwestern. They took her away, <laughs> they stole her from me. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah <I'm laughs> Okay. The school. Remember, he walked up on this man. It's like, oh, so this is what it's all about. Yeah. <laughs> Break right, up right, right there in front. Of me. Man, when I saw that man, I had back flashes. Man, Northwestern Senior High School. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, they were. Yeah, back, 
back in the well, back in the days when I was there. Yeah, you yeah, you had the uh, we had the girls, man. We had the, you know, the the late the girls. I mean that you know, the key. They was they were some nice looking girls up there. They had them, you know, you had them, you know. Yeah. I know, because I went to Pimlico, man. They used to pass right by. There's, and a lot of the girls that I, you know, I went to um, to uh, uh, middle school now, um, went, ended up going to Northwest, because they was going to that area. Right, I ended up going to Polytechnic. And, okay, uh, good, 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 good. Good school. As a matter of fact, I'm not cutting you off, brother, but as a matter of fact, I, <laughs> I didn't even know what Northwest was when I was going to high school. My whole my whole mindset was on City College, but I didn't, I was I'm a I'm a bookworm, so to speak, man. So you know, I was, and as a matter of fact, in high school, I was a nerd. I was a nerd. I was a they called me off brand nerd because I was a misfit. But uh, you know, I was a late bloomer. After you know, after after the service, after you know, the Marine Corps brought me out of that, brother. So <laughs> wow. But uh, wow. Yeah. That's where I was going yeah. next. Um, and we was going we was going to hit on that right after our break. Yeah. Because I know you probably got some stories to tell about those three years. Because I know when, because my dad served in the army. My, my, okay. my, I have an uncle that went in the Marines, and one went, and my, one uncle went into the um, army, and one went into the Air Force. So a lot of my okay. relatives, maybe two, they went all the branches. I'm the only one. Yeah. Uh, and my brother and um, okay. I think my other, they went in the police force. They didn't go. Okay. You know. So okay. We, you know, we was like. You know, we were DJing. That's when Funkadelic and them was hitting the streets, you know, okay. the clubs and parties. <laughs> so we were going. I mean, I, and at the poly, man, I was thinking about I wanted to go to broadcasting school. You know, that was my thing. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So look, man, we're going to take a break, Greg, and we come back, man. We're going to talk about some of the good things you're doing, what what, has, what came out of you being in the Marines, and what made you decide to to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right, that sound good, man? Yes, yes, sir. All right. Yes, we're going to listen to a piece by Angel Sessions, and she's one of the hottest, hottest contemporary gospel artists on earth. That's right, because she's blowing up Amazon every week. So check out Jesus Coming. She has an album out there. I always forget the title of the album. But she had about five, six nice pieces on there I think you enjoy. So let's listen to uh, Jesus Coming Soon by Angel Sessions. Okay. She's from uh,
everyone. This is Tanika Gonzalez, spoken word poet. Whenever I'm online, I'm always listening to Jerry Royce Live. You can find Jerry on www.speaker.com. Positive Power 21. Hey everyone, don't forget about Two Town Thursday with Jerry Boy Live Worldwide on PodsWithPower21.org. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, Tanika Joy from Sector 7 Incorporated. That's right, she's from Sector7Incorporated.com, big film and recording production company. They sponsor a lot of the events to go on the show and a lot of the guests, and we appreciate them 100%. All right, and we're talking to Minister Greg Sean. That's right, I'm Cornell Grace Greg. All right, he is he's from the Army. In 2008, while serving the active U.S. Army, that's where Minister Greg received confirmation from the Lord that he was to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. What happened? What happened, Minister? What went on there? Well, actually, uh, brother, when I was out, I was uh, stationed out of Fort Lewis, Washington, and uh, I just uh, I was a well, minister. Well, actually, he was a minister, a sergeant, and a fellow unit of mine. We were out there, and we just uh, were talking about the Lord one day, and um we uh we just you know witnessing and we just connected and uh my me and my, my brother and I we uh mm-hmm. one day and we just was having Bible study and um in his room in his room we were having Bible study and uh we would just talk and I just started instead of and I just while we were having Bible study I just started preaching like uh you know I was uh teaching but my teaching went into preaching you understand where I'm, where I'm coming from. And so yeah. therefore, yeah. So therefore, um, and he was like, brother, you know, we just started. It's like, brother, did you see what just happened? I said, no. Nah. He said, well, you know, I, I think that, you know, he said, well, there's an anointing on you, brother, that you know, to teach and pre- you know, preach the, the word. And then he, and it was like, he said, have you ever preached before? I said, no. And so therefore, I, well, I told him no. And therefore, at that time, he was going to uh, uh, crossover Christian Center in uh, Lakewood, Washington. That's where he was a member. And uh, I went there and, you know, visited the church, and I just became, I um, started becoming, you know, just actively, uh, well, just uh, attending the services. And then I connected with the pastor, Pastor Brown, and, uh, you know, the pastor just had me um, preach. preach. Uh, he said, All right, well, you preach a sermon, at, and, I, and it just went from there. But as a matter of fact, I had to uh, see the DVD from 2008 that you know, I preached a sermon that, you know, and I was a little nervous. I had butterflies and but the Lord. And from that, and the Lord just, it, it uh, you know, sometimes the Lord works in mysterious ways, brother. brother and, and when he sees, sometimes, you know, when, when I, was, I wasn't moving in that direction, I was an active member in the church, but that's what the Lord wanted me to do the whole time. So the Lord kind of just gave me a push, you understand? And so, therefore, from 08 and just from, like, for the past seven years, so it had to be of the Lord because the Lord, and it was the Lord's doing because this is, you have to understand, brother, this was, I didn't even plan on getting saved. I didn't, you know what? And the thing about it was, it is that where I'm at today in the Lord, preaching the gospel is, is the last place on planet Earth that I thought I would be and wanted to be. You understand? So, therefore, I knew it was of the Lord. So, the Lord, you know, the Lord gave me that. Like that, oh, that push, you know, son, this is where I want you. So I went, you know, I went out and I started preaching and oh, started in 08 and has been preaching ever since, brother, amen, you know, and, and, and just the Lord has just opened up doors and opportunities for me to just exercise my gift that he's given me, you know, so, uh, but it's of the Lord. It's of the Lord because it's flourishing, you know, it's of the Lord because it's prospering. Anything of the Lord will prosper, you know. Amen. And it's, it wasn't flesh. I, would, I didn't push myself out there and say, well, you know, I feel as though, no, the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, he called me to this gospel. I didn't, as a matter of fact, and, and you know, brother, I got saved in 1996. And to be honest, 
the Lord was showing me even then, through the Holy, the Holy Spirit was showing me even through Scripture. You know, I will always open up there, you know, showing me that, you know, preach, you know, I wanted, that he wanted, that the Lord wanted me to preach. You know, I would always read uh, passages in the New Testament, you know, where uh, Paul, every time I would open up the Bible, it was always there in bold letters, preach. Paul went preaching, you know, Peter went preaching, and where the Lord told the disciples, go out and preach the gospel, and I was just like, Lord, why every time? And I would even, you know, even almost 20 years ago, I was always wondering how come every time I opened the Bible, I mean, every time I opened the Bible, it was always a passage about preaching, preaching. Whether it was in the Old Testament, where, uh, 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 I'm sorry, and I just read this the other day, uh, Jeremiah, I'm sorry, Daniel, Jeremiah went, well, I'm sorry, Ezekiel, he went preaching. And I was like, wow, I was, you know, but, you know, but over time, the Holy Spirit began, he would grow me, and I had to go through trials and tribulations with the Lord. You know, you have to grow in grace, as they say, as the old saints will say. So, you know, it wasn't just, I wasn't a novice. No, I'm not a novice preaching this guy. So I've been, I've been with the Lord 19 years, and as I shared with you, you know, it's been, it's been you know, uh, uh, some, sometimes been, it's been carnal, you know. Mm-hmm. When I went there, and then I was collapsing, and I had no fellowship with the Lord, you know, so. You know, I had that, that part-time fellowship, and that's <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Yep. <laughs> Amen. Yes, you know, you know you were, yep. you were led back. You were led yes, back. sir. Now, Praise now, God. Now, our connection is, is the, the, the lovely and the beautiful Pastor Rhonda Bella with the big heart and her yes, powerful sir. praying husband, Barmadillo yeah. Bello. Praise, um, praise the Lord. Yep. That's right. We have had a opportunity my son and I do have done live podcasts. We we were actually there for her um confirmation to be a pastor. Yeah. It was a beautiful, beautiful event. Um, we were so glad to be part of that. Um tell us, you know, what, what's your connection with uh, with the Bellows? Oh well actually uh Rhonda Bellow is my cousin, my second cousin. As a matter of fact, my grandfather and her grandmother are brother and sister. So we're yeah we're cousins yeah we're cousins hey, amen Rhonda Bella's my cousin and of course our husband you know my, that's my cousin in law but you know that, you know in in an African American family cousin is cousin you know so uh, uh, that's my uh, my cousins but yes Rhonda Bello that's my um, that's my cousin hey, amen my blood cousin as a matter of fact we're yeah. second cousin so so uh, yeah. but yes and uh, and she she uh, so but uh, I share this. As a matter of fact, they had me preach for them for about, I did a three-day revival or three-day program for them uh, about a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago. Okay. And, uh, and uh, yes, so uh, and so um, I was saying that you know that anointing, that anointing is on our family. You know that 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 anointing God has, has an anointing on our family. She's saved and she's a co-pastor with her husband. I'm saved. I'm preaching, and so you know I, I, her brother, my cousin uh, uh, Milton Ferguson. Uh, Alex, uh, excuse me, Alexander Ferguson. He's um he's a deacon at the church at our home church. So you know, and then her her sister, my cousin again, Jeline uh, Edwards. She got saved. So you know, she uh, so everybody, you know, that anointing is on our family. You know, so I thank God Amen. for that. So no matter how much Amen. you run, how you can run to the east, the west, the north, the south, God's hand is still on you. You can't run from it. Amen. And I thank God for that. And, and, Amen. Uh, and, and, and Rhonda, she has some powerful, powerful podcasts. Um, she she's very instrumental um, with yeah. us going in this direction. Um, of course, it was a lot of different hands was on us to to let us to where we are today with, with you know with this uh, Christian network where we bring yeah. all these young pastors together uh, in this online. The world can hear them, and when I say the world can hear them, the world is listening everywhere. Yeah. So. Uh, that's a wonderful thing, man. Congratulations to your family. She told me the story. She told a great story when we first met her on the show when she was talking about her book. We had both of yeah. them on here talking about that. And her story was, whoa, man. Yeah. Ooh, young lady went through all that. And she's a graduate of Western High School, which, you know, of course, that was very <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's your sister's school. Praise, praise God. Yeah, yeah. She was, I know about that Polly Western connection, yes. Amen. Yeah, my wife is. My wife actually graduated from Western and my sister and my sister in law and, and cousins and cousins. And okay. I'm mama. <laughs> okay. Right. A good old time over at Western. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know you did. Yeah, yeah, Western had, like I say, back. I, I, I went to school in, uh, in the 80s and early 90s. I saw I, high school. So when I, I used to, I used to, uh, 
I, man, I used to, man, I used to, sometimes we used to, we would leave school, me and my buddies, they'd leave North Washington and come down to Washington just to try to, you see them girls, man, trying to get a girlfriend. <laughs> you could have just, just stood on uh, Cold Spring and, and um, Wabash, man, and seen some, some, some nice ones, you know. Yeah, yes, sir, yeah, because some of them, yes, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, coming up with Baltimore, you know. So that's pretty yeah, much man. what we grew up in North Baltimore. Yeah. All right. And we're going to take a quick musical break. When we come back, man, we're going to talk about these ministries you got going on, man, and, and how Pretty how you touching people and how they touching you. All right, so we're yes, going to sir. listen to one of my favorite artists, one of my favorites, and this is uh, Kimberly Kimberly, and this is called I Want to Be Yours. Here we go. Yep. This is Angel Sessions, and when I'm in town, I listen to Jerry Royce live, PositivePower21.org, where they play my favorite music. 
That's right. We're playing your favorite songs and your big hits right here, Angel Sessions, on Positive Power 21.org, with Jerry Woods Live Worldwide and Friends. So you check out my friends, all my podcasts is right here, 24 channels available to you right on PositivePower21.org, so you have your pickings. You have an opportunity to listen to the famous one. That's right, Kimmy Kim out of St. Louis from Relations Radio. You got Sabrina Williams, that's right, from the famous Williams sister, the tennis player. That's right, she podcasts right here on demand, right on her channel. Check her out. I, can, I can't remember everybody's channel number, but check out Sabrina. She has some really good shows. She brings celebrities and all kinds of great people to her podcast. And she will be here soon. That's right. She be coming here in October to talk to me on my show. That's right, the Ladies of Radio. We're bringing all the podcast, all the female podcasts, including Pastor Rhonda Bello, T. Spence, Kimmy Kim, that's right, Benita Claiborne, The Storm, Sabrina Brown, the inspirational one from, from South Carolina, Miss Louise Smith, the publisher from Jam Vibes Radio and Kingdom's Builder Publications. Uh, and my favorite also, I Am Superwoman, Tina Hobson going to be here, Commanding Your Life, Beverly Fells Jones going to be on the show. We're going to have a ball. I know I forgot somebody, but they, oh, Michelle Emmons, that's right. She talks about how to take care of your, your colon. Tell me that's not important, Minister. All right, y'all. <laughs> We're talking to Minister Cornell, Sean Gregg from Baltimore, Maryland, Antioch Baptist Church, and we're very familiar with, with Pastor Barney. He's been around here for a while. I remember when he put up that new building, and uh, he was the man, you know. He was the man. Everybody was talking about <laughs> Reverend Barney. All yeah. right. Okay. Now, you're doing a whole lot of things with Reverend Barney. I mean, I yeah. passed the barn because he preached like a reverend. Yeah. <laughs> right. I know. I know. Now the, the, you know. The, I guess the, you know, the political name is Pastor, but he preached like a reverend. He, he throws yeah. things. He doesn't play. He don't pull no punches. No punches. <laughs> talking to you. Sitting there, oh yeah. my God, is he talking to me? Yeah. yeah. You're in the church and you, and you start saying that to yourself. You're at the right place. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sir. <laughs> All right, yeah. tell us about these ministries, man. You're like a busy bee up in there in New Antioch. Uh, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. My, uh, my, you know, my pastor, um, Pastor Kenneth Barney, uh, Kenneth, Kenneth L. Barney Sr., um, my mentor, my spiritual father. Um, you know, when I went to him and told him that, you know, I, that the Lord, I felt as though uh, that the Lord had, um, that I had called him on my, on my life for the Lord to use me in preaching. Uh, one of his first... Uh, <laughs> And, and Pastor said, you know, he, he's him being the spiritual uh, um, father that he is, you know, and him being wise in the Holy Spirit. Uh, he said, okay, if that's how, you know, if, if the Lord has truly called you to this son, uh, let's, you know, it's a ministry that, uh, and and the thing, it was a te- in, a, in, a, in a sense, it was a test because uh, he said, okay, so you know, you, know, you should, should get your feet wet for street ministry, and he told me uh, about street ministry and uh, nursing home ministry and. Uh, um, prison ministry, you know, and so as a young preacher, as a young, you know, a lot of uh, young preachers, the first to, 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 the first place they want to go is to the pulpit, and not everybody's called there, you know, and so pastor, you know, he was, he said, he said, let me test your heart, let me see if you're really into this, son, so he said, you know, if you can preach out there to the wolves, you can preach anywhere, and so the thing about it was, <laughs> it's so ironic, it's so funny, it's kind of funny, brother, by me going into, by me they are going into street ministry and going into prison ministry and nursing home ministry. I found that's where my passion is. Praise the Lord. That's where, I mean, that's, that's where my passion is. Amen. So, you know, I wasn't, it wasn't a fearful thing. It wasn't a thing of, you know, I understand my pastor, you know, he, he, he was, he was teaching me, he was teaching me and testing me at the same time. If you understand what I'm saying, you know, teaching me, you know, this, this is, this is true ministry, son. True ministry is, is in, into the people who are into the poor, into the brokenhearted. That's true ministry. That's, that's who the Lord Jesus Christ really called us to preach to. He didn't really call us to the poor, you know, the pulpit is fine. That's for, that's for the body. You know, when you're preaching in the pulpit, you preach it to the body. But what Christ was saying when, and, and when, before he left this earth, he wants you to preach to the world, the world, the unsaved 
world. You understand what I'm saying? So street ministry right. and, and prison ministry and nursing home ministry, that's the world, the sick, the brokenhearted, the, the demonically possessed, the, the demonically depressed. You understand what I'm saying? That's who you, you know, that's, that's the test and, and see uh, the test. Are you really called of the Lord to, to preach this gospel? Really see if you called of the Lord Jesus Christ to preach this gospel. Because if you can preach out there, to them, to 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 the uh, the drug dealers, the pimps, the pushers, the prostitutes, the whoremongers, the homosexuals, the lesbians. If you can preach to those, if you can preach to those who who the world, who, who society has so called called the scum of the earth, if you can preach this gospel to them, you understand, and then come back not only once but come back uh, uh, Sunday or whenever you get an opportunity to come back and preach to them, and whenever you get a time, like an uh, opportunity to go to, to the nursing home ministry and, and preach to those who are sick or bedridden and, and, and really can't get out, and and, and now the test to see if your heart, if you have a pure heart for people, nursing home ministry will test your heart for people, and prison ministry oh, yeah. test, test, and prison ministry tests your tolerance for people. Because you're dealing with different aspects, you know, you're dealing with a lot of, uh, you're dealing with, all, in all three of those arenas, you're dealing with different demons and different spirits, you understand what I'm saying? So, in, in the prison ministry, you're dealing with a lot, you have, you're dealing with murderous spirits, you understand, rapist spirits, you have de- dealing with uh, a lot of, bro- and even that, you're dealing with a lot of brokenness, a lot of men who've been broken, who've been bad, who've been abused, who've been molested, and so therefore, a lot of anger is there. So if you can witness and, 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 and witness and penetrate that heart with that gospel of Jesus Christ, son, then you call. You, know, you, you truly are called. And come to find out, like I said, brother, that's my passion. I live, I live to preach on them streets and preach in them prisons and preach in that nursing home. I'd rather be in there than to preach in the pulpit because I realize, I understand, it's easy, you know what, in a sense, it's easier to preach the gospel to these, to, to that, those three or three, sometimes than it is to preach to church folk. Yeah. And, I've, I, I, and, and, and matter of fact, and, and, and in some arenas, I know it's pastors and preachers that's on this podcast that probably listen to podcasts, they agree with me. Because sometimes, mm-hmm. because some, you get more response sometimes from, 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 from sinners than you do saints. You know, because in the church, sometimes we get comfortable. We get comfortable with it. You know, we dress up nice on Sunday. We, you know, we drive in nice cars. We live in nice homes. So, therefore, we, 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 we really, we, we, you're not getting, uh, uh, you're getting service, but you're not getting, sometimes you're not getting genuine praise from people on Sunday morning. You know, sometimes yeah. church, church to, in, 20, in the 21st century, uh, the church has become a social club. You understand? It's entertaining. It's not empowering anymore. It's not empowering uh, anymore. The church is not really empowering. It's entertaining. And you understand? So it's not like the first century church. They were empowered. You understand? They were empowering people. They weren't entertaining people because the whole they were they were empowered with the Holy Spirit. And so the whole you know the Holy Spirit or, or the first century church had a lot of spirit, had a lot of Holy Spirit. So it empowered them to change the world. And now the world is changing the church. You understand what I'm saying? The roles have changed. So mm. I didn't mean to start preaching there, but I mean that you know the Lord just when we said it on the you know on the radio. Yeah, that, that's what has changed. The roles of the world and the church have changed. Yeah, and I mean I'm not you know I'm not gonna go into uh, I'm not gonna preach politics, but a lot of laws that have been passed down in in D.C. Now has has affected the church where and 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 when you know brothers forty fifty years ago the church would you would never get the church to compromise with something that's ungodly and wicked as some of these legislations that D.C. is now passing and now trying to force on the house of God to 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 enforce. Yeah, well, you lose, right, you lose your tax your tax um, credit. Right, yeah. right. If you don't, if you, yeah, yeah, right. So now it's a test now. Who are you really for? Who's on the lower side? A tax credit. So now if you don't marry two men, if you don't marry two women, you, 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 you subject to be taxed. Well, I'll tell you what, tax me. As a matter of fact, you can tax me all day long. I still for for God I live and for God I die. For God I die. You know what I'm saying? The, the Lord, thus said the Lord God, if a man lies with another man, as he lies with a woman, he should, it's an abomination of God. He should be put, they should be put to death. And that's the word of God. So, I mean, how can you go from, I mean, it's plain and simple in Leviticus, and he comes back and they say, well, the, whole, uh, the LBGT community try to say, well, that was the Old Testament. Well, let's come to the New Testament. Romans tells me about it too. For this cause, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things that should not be done. 
And so therefore, you say, well, you sound like you you, you, you preaching hate, uh, young brother. You, you teaching or talking hate? No, I'm not talking hate. I'm talking reality. I'm talking spiritual wickedness. And therefore, out of love, that I, 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 I say this because I know you on you, and nobody, and this, just watch this, brother. Nobody with all our church, with all the church, compromising with that lifestyle. Nobody's teaching them that the end result of that is death and hell. That's the end result. If you die in that sin without repenting to and coming to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, just like the, the drug dealer, the pimp, and the pusher, or the prostitute, just like if they die in that sin and they go going to hell, if you die in that wicked, perverted sin, uh, young man, young woman, or woman, man, you, are all, you will die and spend eternity in hell. That's the reality. That's the end result of sin. Sin is death. death. And, that's the, and, that, that, and that's what we're not preaching in our pulpits. Mm-hmm. They burn. And, amen. They burn. Amen. amen. And we're not preaching hate. We're preaching truth. Gee, our God is truth. The Lord Jesus Christ, our God is a God of truth. Yes, he's a God of grace and mercy, and that's the only thing. And, and I preach that on the corner, brother. The only thing that's keeping God from, 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 from uh, 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 taking out this uh, uh, the LBGT community like he did in Sodom and Gomorrah is grace and mercy, is, is, the, is, is the resurrection of Jesus Christ ushering in the grace age, and that's what we're living in, the church and grace age. That's what's keeping back God's wrath. Is that God just says, okay, you know what? I've given you a chance to turn from your wicked ways to receive my son, Jesus Christ. So when we say we're living in the last days, that's what we mean. We're living in the last days of the church age, of the days and age of grace. And you see it. That's the days we're living in, the last days of grace. That's what we mean before, before, the, uh, before the, the second coming of Christ takes place. So it's so time. So, Greg, so basically what you're saying, a lot of people are misinterpreting a lot of the verses of the Scripture. Yes, you know, and, yes, sir. And, so, they need to go to, so they need Bible studies, basically what you're saying. And, yes, sir. And, and, and what, yes, and that, that's what I'm saying, Mr. Bray. That's what I'm saying, Brother Royce. The thing, and I, the, and I, like he, I like uh, it says in my bio, I'm, I'm a strong advocate against scriptural, scriptural and biblical ignorance. In the church, you know, um, like I said, I was born and raised in the church, you know, and uh, my grandmother, God bless her heart, she was an evangelist, but a lot of things, <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing, but a lot of things my grandmother said, quoted, man, was, uh, was quoted to me growing up was, was, uh, was, was not scriptural at all, was not scriptural. Now, watch this. Some things that she said might, might in some passages in Scripture that, that would support her, her, um, her, uh, her statements, but it wasn't scriptural. Prime example, watch this. My grandmother would say something like, uh, if you make one step, God will make two. Okay. Now, if you, you know, but, but okay, that's not scriptural, but it's a, a passage in Scripture. Malachi says, draw nigh unto me, and I'll draw nigh unto you. Understand? That's what God was saying, you know, in Malachi. Now, there's a passage that supports that statement, but that what she said was not necessarily biblically verbatim true. You understand? Textually, it wasn't true. Now, but it's a scripture, a passage in scripture that supports her statement. She used to say something like, uh, uh, it just was, uh, just things I used to hear, and I just, and even as a child, I understood, you know, but, but, I understood what, what she meant, but it, the thing of it was, it was in error. You understand? And mm-hmm. and the thing of it was, it's, it's like uh, uh, it really. Um, and, and I kind of I couldn't fault the ministry at the time because, like I said, I was a I was a child, I was a kid, and so therefore, I think that scriptural and biblical ignorance was passed down. It had to be. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And so. Mm-hmm. And and so that's why I'm a strong app now. I'm I'm seeking to go back now. I'm, I'm like as a matter of fact now, I'm in Baltimore School of the Bible. And because I want to learn more about the Lord, you know, and, and I feel as though if how am I out here pre- how am I out here preaching and teaching and I don't know the word for myself. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I need to I need to uh know how to preach this in truth and so I won't be in error. And so therefore that's why I'm such a strong advocate of, of, of biblical and scriptural uh biblical education. Because I've seen so much of it growing up in my life of the of the of the error and the scriptural biblical and scriptural ignorance. 
and and the thing of it was, you know, a uh, uh, brother saints or I can't really call them saints because all they are really are church goers. And you have a lot of brothers and sisters that's going to these churches for years, twenty and thirty and forty years, and aren't saved. Never received the Lord Jesus Christ as their savior. They sing on the choir. They serve on usher board. Watch this. They serve on the deacon boards. They ordain deacons and never receive Christ. Mm. Matt, watch this. Now you were and I was taking a step further. They preach in your pulpit and aren't saved. Excuse me, I don't want to say they preach in pulpits across America, across Baltimore and, and, and across America, and haven't even received the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. That's oh, criminal and that's that. crucial. That's cr- and I will say that, that is, that, yes, sir, that's criminal. Got the degree, got the degree, yes. got, an got the degree, got but don't get yeah. No, sir. No, sir. You have the degree, but you don't have you don't have the decree. Watch this. You, don't, you have the degree, but you don't have the decree. Decree of the Holy Spirit, the decree of Jesus Christ. You don't have the decree to say you have never de- a decree that Jesus Christ is Lord and you have never invite, invited him to your heart and never, ex- and never repented of your sins and accepted him as Lord and Savior, as Lord and Savior of your life. That's why, so much, that's why you ever see so, a lot of... Uh, 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 not to go deep, bro, but if you ever see a lot of corruption and a lot of sin taking place in the church, yeah, because yeah. sometimes it says, and uh, 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 it, 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 nine times out of sin, because sometimes sin starts in the pulpit. And that's because if that brother's not right, if that brother's not saved, if the head isn't right, the body's going to fall apart. You understand what I'm saying? The head is sick, the body is going to be sick, and so forth. Therefore, if your pastor is wicked and perverse and, and, and doesn't understand that he's caught up in biblical and scriptural enemies and he's not saved preaching the gospel, guess what? Guess who's the head of that church? Yeah, I know, understand that uh, scripturally Jesus Christ is, is supposed to, he's the head of his church. You understand what I'm saying? He's the head of, uh, uh, he's, he's a um, he's the head of the churches that he established. But a lot of times, a lot of these churches are here false churches. And Satan is the head of him. I'm just going to put it out there. He is. He's the head of him. Yeah, false prophets. With, amen, yeah. false prophets. So what takes us back to this, uh, this, 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 these, these uh, tax, what it was called, of trying to force, the ch- and force us and the church to uh, accept this same-sex law. And so, therefore, so what you have out here, to me, is a lot of false prophets that are accepting this. But the Re- book of Revelation talks about that. So... I mean, it, and what God is doing is he's separating the wheat from the tear. He's separating the true believers from the false believers. Because how can I be a saved, baptized believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, call Jesus Lord, and deduce, and then, then stand with something that's contrary to, the, to his word? Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 I mean, you know. Amen. And, 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 and I think. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So you get your work cut out for you, man. It's like God chose the right person for the street ministry yep. and the prison. Praise the I Lord. I know they challenge you in there. And I, I know oh, yeah. you got some oh, yeah. yes, sir. going on with those guys because they've been, they they in hell. And, and they don't yes. have nowhere else to go. So they so when you come in there, bring your vibe. I know that's probably how, why you know it so well because they will challenge you. And those guys know what they're talking about because they're going to dive in that thing and be ready for you the next time you come through those doors. Amen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. You know, I deal with a lot of brothers, uh, you know, especially Muslims. I think that my 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 biggest challenge is the Muslim, is this Muslim brother, yeah. sister. You know, what? I'm the Muslim brothers. I'm sorry. The Muslim brothers. And, the, and you know, and the thing of it is that uh, because I almost became a Muslim, I almost joined the Nation of Islam. And so, yeah, this was about when I was about 20. So I got saved when I was 22. So uh, when I came out the Marine Corps, because I got, <laughs> so, you know, that, uh, the Marine Corps, man, being young, it was good in one way and bad in another because I uh, I, uh, I started to, um, you know, I got, I started hanging out with some Muslim brothers in there. And so, you know, and then it, my ideology uh, uh, was uh, more or less, um, Coming out, you know, it was more on a, um, a black nationalist um, platform. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, black against white, you know. And so, so you know, I was taking that stance when I was 20, about 20 years ago. When I was about yeah. 20 some years when I was about 20, you know, and I was a young black man, bitter, angry for no reason. Didn't know why I hated white with the white man. So you know, and for no reason, he did nothing to me. I was I wasn't born a slave. I was born in 1973. No, excuse me, 1973. Mm-hmm. 
post-civil rights, so, you know, so, you know, and then so, you know, just listening to a lot of uh, propaganda, if you will. You understand what I'm saying? So, right. so like I said, it was you know, my back then, but it was really popular because that's when, you know, Furcon was really Yes, making a yes, the early you know, 90s, yes, late 80s, early 90s, early 90s. Yes, 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 yes. A lot of people, a lot of people were lost. They didn't know where to go, so they came right in at, a, at an opportune time. Right. So you're right. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, uh, oh, man. but you, but you know, even even in that, bro, my brother, the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, he, uh, he, 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 he snatched, he caught me early, early in life, you know, and he caught me early and taught me early in life, you know, uh, uh, because, you know, right. So you know, I could teach those brothers, you know, there's no salvation plan in that, you know. Yes, you wear the boat. Yes, you're disciplined. Okay. Yes, you, yes, you, uh, uh, you're stepping up being men, so to speak. You know, you're taking care of your families. You know, you're taking care of your children in order, your house in order. But your heart isn't in order. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if you die today and if so tomorrow, see what I'm saying? If you die today or tomorrow, where will you spend eternity? See, I, you know, we talk, they talk about Allah and all this. But the thing of it is, even in that, Satan is even deceptive in that. Those brothers with all their, 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 their instructions on how to live, how to be men, how to take care of their families, how to take care of their wives, you know, being married, even in all that, they'll still die and go to hell. Even yeah, with all that, that discipline. Thing. Yeah, and it's funny that that was one of the only things that came out good about that was that they were teaching them how to be men, how to you know right. how to be entrepreneurs, bring their own money to their household, you know, basically going out there and learn how to hunt, and then right. you know teaching their their black sons how to be men. So that was one of the good things that came out of it because they were hitting the streets, getting a lot of the brothers out of jail, keeping them out of jail. So you know, right. so it was like you couldn't really. Like you know, down too bad because you didn't see a lot of the Christian brothers out there. No, no, right, and that's that's the, that's the argument. Yes, yes, right, right, exactly, exactly. And you did, and that's what attract you know, as a young black male go uh, from the inner city, from from the hood, so to speak. That's what attracted you know attracted me to to uh, the nation as well. You know, you know the discipline, huh? Yeah, I'm I was going to say one of the things that you know that can always come out of the these conversations that we have on podcasts is like, where are the black, the black Christian churches? Where are they? You know, I mean, some of them got the food pantries and the clothing uh, yeah. drives going on and passing out turkeys. But the, you know, the state of the black man is, is, is in the hands of the judicial system right now. I mean, when it comes to jobs and training and education and, you know, you yeah. name it, there's a whole lot of issues on the, on the whiteboard right now that they not holding nobody liable for right now. So, you know, it's a lot of, you know, you got people that's on the fence right now man about about christianity i mean he understand what you know who god is but then it's like well, well what are these people what are they right are his they representatives doing? right they it's, it's exactly. buildings and they're driving their fat rides and they're making they right. taking fat money telling anybody to give their 10 percent and then i'm reading you know that you, you can give this as long as you, you're working your way up to that see, see that's what people kind of like uh, i'm just gonna stay home listen to tv jakes you know so look man we're gonna take a quick break man because we're going to have to get out of here. But we're going to definitely have you back, man, because that's what Positive Power is about, man. PositivePower21.org is all about bringing conversation, bringing people a pink. And people got to learn from this stuff. We are introducing Bible study, and we hope that you'll be able to hook up with Pastor Bello because she is part of Elation Radio. And, of course, right now they are doing an empowerment women thing right now. But we yeah. will be having uh, ladies at Radio on here, but we're also going to be having – some panel discussion with the men coming up soon. As soon as okay. you football come to a close and we got more free time, we um, hope to, um, to, to bring gentlemen like you together with some of the other male pastors that's part of um, the round table at Positive Power Tournament. So we hope we can have you back, man. Of course, it won't be a 50-minute program. It's going to probably be more like two, three hours because oh. it's going to be a lot of okay. discussion come out of that. All right? <laughs> and, of course, we're going okay. to have to play – we're gonna to have to play. We're gonna to have to play devil's advocate because it is a lot of conversations that's necessary right now. And and, and and you brought up some really good points, and some of the things I hit you up with because people are concerned right now. Who who's going to save us, man? Who's going to save mankind? Are you guys going to stay behind your fancy glass paying churches and drive your BMWs, or are you going to start hitting the street like Minister Cornell Sean Gregg is doing? We need more guys like him because the brothers on the corners don't see us. 
They don't. And we don't even drive through there anymore to see our mamas because we moved them out and put them in fancy senior citizen home because yeah. you know you yeah. can do it now. Before you couldn't exactly. do that. They, they, yeah. they would stay in their house and rot until they die. They die in their home. Now we got the money, put them in nice fancy places. So man, we're gonna have you back, all right, man. So look, I'm gonna get your closing remarks. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to listen to my man, Greg Harris. His brother had went through a lot, man, almost lost his legs, and now he's back. He is back preaching, this, preaching, preaching and singing. All right, it's Greg Harris, and this song is called He is Worthy. So it's a quick three minutes. I hope you enjoy it. We'll be right back to talk to Minister Cornell Sean Gregg of New Antioch Baptist Church in Baltimore, Maryland. I'll tell you, everybody. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. God is will bless his holy name for all he's wonderfully gave me victory kept my heart in perfect peace i will you just cause you're you jehovah child there's no one like you Director, producer Alan Wills, and I am on Positive Power 21 with Jerry Royce Live. And when I'm online, I listen to Jerry Royce Live at www.freaker.com backslash positivepower21.org. Y'all heard? All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to positivepower21.org. You listen to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide, episode 391 with Minister Cornell Sean Gregg of Baltimore, Maryland, New Antioch Baptist Church, sitting right up there in Randallstown with the Honorable Reverend Barney. That's right. We've been there a number of times ourselves, you know, including New Year's Day, and we always had a good time. And just uh, to piggyback on our, on our song by Angel Sessions, her album is called Songs of Comfort. Songs of Comfort, you get that right out there on Amazon. She got YouTube. She got some of the best videos out there from an independent, but she does – Represent um artistic, uh, exp- artistic artists. No, United Artists Worldwide. I think that's what it's called. All right, so check them out. 
Check them out. All right, now I'm make sure that's correct because, man, we got, we got so much information. We got so many people we've met podcasting. Podcasting is a wonderful thing. Support our, our podcasters. They have some awesome shows, including um, Minister, that's right, Cornell Sean Gregg's cousin, Pastor Rhonda Bello. She, she gives an awesome Bible study, and we hope to bring more uh, people like her. And we will be on location. That's right, on location next Wednesday at Maximum Life Christian Church. That's right, the sound of my voice. Come check us out, y'all. We're going to be live podcasting at a Bible study with, with the Honorable Pastor Sherry Grant. She gives a powerful presentation. Um, you have an opportunity you can catch her sermon right here on Spreaker Radio. That's right, Spreaker Radio at Spreaker.com forward slash Positive Power 21. You can catch Maximum Life Christian Church with Pastor Sherry Grant, and she, what a, what a show. And also on Periscope, we be bringing that broadcast live, that's right, live, live, that's right. Everybody having so much fun doing crazy stuff on Periscope, well, we're going to be bringing the Lord, that's right, God's Word, right to Periscope, so you be able to tune in. And we will be broadcasting all over Facebook, so you guys know when to tune in, because I think Bible studies start promptly at 730. All right, Minister Cornell, you ready to give us your... The final words, sir. We appreciate you having you on the show, man, and we, we will have you back. We hope to yeah. hope you be able to hook up with your cousin too, man, and and, and do, give us another um brilliant, brilliant podcast like Amen. this one. Thank you so much. All right. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Uh, no, I just want to say that uh, you know the Lord um the Lord is mighty. The Lord is good um to anyone that's listening. Um, the Lord does allow U turns. And to to all my um, people that's in church but not in Christ, get saved. Um, as, as I made a, um, a comment on Facebook today, let's stop playing church and let's stop being the church. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what I'm gonna leave. Yeah, that's my final statement. Let's stop playing church and let's start being the church. And that's the only way the world gonna know that our God is real if we are being real. That's right. So that's right. It's, that's it. It's not a fraternity or a sorority. No, it's not. You got to get rid of it. That's right. You got to bring it now. Well, like you said, man, you know, you'll start seeing who the fakers are, man. That's going to be obvious pretty soon. And uh, right. and it's when you bring that up because that was one of the, the big questions that uh, that uh, the storm, we got a show called The Storm with, with Benina Claiborne, and she asked, you know, how would you know that, you know, the pastors or the ministers is coming to PositivePower21.org, you know, podcast, are, are real and bringing it. I said they would know it because, you know, one, they're going to be responsible for monthly covering their expenses to have these airtime. And, you know, why are you going to spend money to be playing church? You know, so right. people will know. Right. You know, they know what right. they did, especially if you start taking callers because they will call you, you know, yeah. and they will ask you questions. So you better bring it. All right, man. Well, yeah. like I said, man, we got to have you back. We will keep yeah. you in the loop. Remember, we do have a pretty powerful network. So if you can get with your cousin, she can make sure that can happen. So you can yeah. be part of some of these other podcasts that's happening right here so you can bring your powerful message, man, because you like, you like the storm, man. You guys don't pull no punches, man. You, you guys are going to be challenging them, man. You, you're not afraid of them, man. You're not afraid to challenge the pulpit, and that's the key. And I can't wait to run and um, her husband, um, pastor, senior pastor, um, Bello, start doing some of the things they're trying to do on air, too. Yeah. They're trying to bring some Christian – Internet TV, so that'll be uh, yeah. powerful, man, to see you know you part of something like that, also. Yeah. All right, amen. Yeah, amen, amen, brother. Uh, all right, and like I tell everybody, you gotta check us out. I'm gonna be broadcasting about Periscope behind the pulpit. So that's what we doing. We go out in the community. We bring in a lot of these small churches because I heard that the average size of a church in America is 50 parishioners. I'm like, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, yeah, yeah. was kind of. Oh, I can't believe that. But you know, but I've been visiting yeah. churches that have like fifteen people, maybe twenty. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, they come faithfully. Yeah, that's deep. Yeah, that's really deep. And, and I guess you got to count the people who have church in their living room too. You got to count them too, right? Like five. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Praise the Lord. Church. But but before I go though, Greg, when we look at what you're doing, man, with your ministry, man, like how many how many how many prisoners are coming to you? To your services, man. We, we, like, how often are you going in there? Let, let, let me hear that for uh, well, before you close out. All right. Uh, but, uh, excuse me. Every third, excuse me. Every third Saturday of the month, 
a new Antioch Baptist Church. We uh, it's, well, it consists of about it consists of about ten brothers, or about 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 on a, uh, anywhere can vary between five to six brothers. I mean, five to ten brothers of us from New Antioch. Uh, which uh, Pastor Barney, he's um, he's down there faithfully. Uh, him and uh, Brother Mobley, uh, and um, mm-hmm. and so uh, every se- well, actually every third Saturday we're down in Brockridge and Jessup, Jessup, Maryland. So we now I think that's okay. pre-release. So we really don't do uh, we not yet, and uh, we really don't we're not on like the uh, maximum security, you know, maximum security side or, or, or down. But we're doing pre-release. But uh, those brothers, so uh, we have about I say about fifty brothers, about fifty to seventy-five brothers that come out. You know, on that uh, second, um, yeah, that third Saturday, and they, and they, they want to hear the word, man. They want to hear the word. And some brothers have gotten saved in prison, and uh, uh, I met some brothers. They got released from prison, and they come to New Antioch and um, give them their life and join the ministry, join join uh, New Antioch. So, yeah, so uh, yeah, so that's powerful, bro. So they have they have a um, they have a minister who's in charge down in Brockway. They have a minister who heads up. He's their minister in, um, he's their pastor in the prison. So, you know, the Lord, sometimes the Lord puts those brothers in there to really draw out what he had put into them. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, sometimes he, yeah. God, yeah, God has to put you in a place to draw out what he put in you from the foundations of the earth out of you, which you keep running from. The mm-hmm. thing uh, that preaching, some of us, some of them brothers have been running from preaching. Some of them brothers have been running from evangelizing. So God has to put them like Jonah. He has to put them in, in a well, and so their well is that prison cell, and to draw out of them what God has put in them from the day, from the foundations of the world. A lot, and so and there's a lot of those brothers down there. They're preachers. They're pastors. But they, they it's just the circumstances of life that, that, that by running from God, running from calling, has put you in a situation where now God can get your attention. You understand? Where God has to put you somewhere where he can get your attention. Amen. That's right. He said, I got you now. And if anybody want to hear a similar testimony to that, they can hear Brother Charles. That's right. Brother Charles, he, he's going to be um, doing some, um, well, he does podcasting. And we're going to be okay. bringing some of his live podcasts right here to Positive Power. We'll be streaming um, from Blog Talk Radio. Um, so he does, I think, every Tuesday. And he witnessed the same thing. He said um, he got saved in the, in the prison. And uh, my brother okay. had... COs and prison. He said his congregation size sometimes around 800 members. So I was like, whoa, that's deep. Whoa, yeah, yeah that's, that's deep. deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, have you talked to him, man? Because he's right outside of Virginia, so uh, we'd be able okay. to get something here. All right, well, I got to get out of here, everybody. And like I got to tell all everybody right. all the time, I'm Jerry Royce Live. I'm worldwide. Thank you for tuning in to Jerry Voice Live on Positive Power 21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash Positive Power 21. This is a Voice Enterprises production. And don't forget about replay on Facebook.com forward slash Jerry Voice Live.